Hello and welcome to another Active Reach technical tutorial video. Today I just want to show you how we can add a guest VLAN to a network. Let's just take this example here and work with it. This is a simple network connecting to a, a, a layer 3 switch. So the switch is doing the routing between uh, the networks and the internet. We've got ourselves a gateway router configured for the internet access and to provide DHCP over these two VLANs. So we've got two VLANs, we've got VLAN 30 and we've got VLAN 45 configured. And this works all quite happily. We've got um, a device here, which you can see is on VLAN 45. And we've got another device here, which is on VLAN 30. And we can communicate across um, the two VLANs quite happily, each device can talk to each other. So the other one was 10.5.0.6 and we can reach that and from the other device we can reach 10, 30, uh, what was it again, 0, 11. like so. If you're using a Windows machine for something like this, just bear in mind that the Windows firewall might block um, the ping response. Um, so that has to be allowed through, which is what I've done on these devices, just to make sure that they both respond to ping. And you can see as well, they access the internet quite happily. Their gateway being the switch. And I'll just show you the switch config. So here's the switch. And then you can see The switch has VLAN 30 configured on it, and it has VLAN 45 configured on it. And we've got a helper address on each VLAN, which is our router, and the IP route points to that router as well, the default route points to that router as well. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the router. So here's the router, it's a DHCP server and gateway router. And in there we have a LAN pool for the 45 network, VLAN 45, and we have a LAN pool for the VoIP pool. We don't need to configure the VLANs on here. We only need the VLAN um, 50, which is the um, address that needs to talk to the switch. And we have a, an IP route back to those networks to the switch's IP address here, IP route to there. And of course, this is also a NAT device, so we have to make sure that we are allowing NAT for those networks and that goes out through our fast ethernet 4 ip address here okay so that's how this basic network here is established and now what we want to do is we want to add another network so say you want to put a guest wi-fi in or you want to allow other guests to connect to the same switch but you don't want them to be able to access your vlan and in fact you want them to be kept as separate as possible we don't even want DHCP coming from the same DHCP address. We just want to complete, completely separate this VLAN. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to introduce another firewall onto our network. We're going to deploy a Meraki firewall and we're going to put it on a new VLAN. So how are we going to do this and make sure that these are completely separate when they're connecting into the same switch? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is deploy our Meraki firewall and get it connected to the internet. And in true Blue Peter's fashion, here's one I made earlier. So here is a Meraki firewall which is deployed, it's on the internet. Um, as you can see, connected. And it's just got the basic connectivity in on, on the internet over my normal LAN. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the VLAN area, and I'm just going to do add VLAN. And I'm just going to call this guests, and I'm going to give it VLAN 66, and I'm going to give it an address as I showed on here. We are going to be deploying it with 66 1066.6, okay? MX will be 1066.6.254, and the subnet is going to be 1066.6.0 slash 24. 
Okay, we're going to create that VLAN. And we're, going, we're, we're connecting this from port 1 on the firewall to switch port 24. Okay, so let's make sure we configure that correctly. And now I'm just clicking on port 1 and I'm changing it to an access port on VLAN 66. Okay, like so. And I'm clicking save. And what I'm also going to do, I'm, I'm, going to I'm going to use the other features on this firewall to restrict my guests. Yeah, I don't want them to, to have full access to the internet and other things. It's going to be a guest network, so we, we're going to take advantage of some content filtering as well. So let's go in here and let's block some stuff. Let's block a few categories and make sure that there's a few things that they can't do on the internet, just to keep them a, a bit restricted. And we'll test that as well when we do it. Okay, that'll do. This is using the content filtering feature on Meraki Firewall. This is the Meraki MX64. Okay, and we also want this to be the DHCP server for our VLAN 66 users. So go into here. Don't need to worry about VLAN 1 because we're not using it, but I'm just going to turn that off. And here we've got our VLAN 66. This is the default. When you create a new VLAN, it will automatically turn on the DHCP server option. Okay, so we're happy that that's going to work. And now what we need to do is configure our switch so that we've got VLAN 66 ready to talk to the um, to talk to the firewall. So let's go back to our switch. And we need to go into configure mode on here. And what we want to do is we plugged into port 24. So the first thing we need to do is go into port 24. And we need to set this to switch port mode access. And we need to tell it it's going to use VLAN 66. And we don't have VLAN 66 created at the moment. So when we do this, hopefully it will create it. It does. Okay, creating VLAN 66. We don't need spanning tree on this because it's connecting to the firewall. So let's do spanning tree or fast. Get a little warning there that we don't want to. If it's connecting, um, if we're connecting a trunk or connecting to another switch, then it would be prudent to make sure spanning tree is enabled. But we don't need to worry about that. We're on a loop-free network, and that will just make that port run a bit faster. Okay, so if we just do a, a show run, I'll show you what that's done. That has added VLAN 66 to that port, so we should be able to talk to our firewall. But we won't be able to talk to it from this switch because this is just layer two, so we can't ping it or anything like that. And if we also do a show VLAN, we should see that new VLAN. There we go, there it is. And we can see our other VLANs on that switch as well. Okay. And the next thing we do is we're going to put a user into that VLAN as well. Okay, so we've only configured the VLAN to the firewall. If we wanted to connect an access point, uh, a wireless access point, we could put a port into VLAN 66. We could put a, 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 a wireless access point on there. Um, or but we're just going to configure one for a laptop, just a normal device, and we're going to put it into VLAN 66. So let's configure VLAN 66 um, onto port. Let's just put it onto port 16. Okay, so back into configuration mode. We're going to go internet interface. 16, switch port, access, VLAN 66, switch port mode access, and we're all going to say spanning tree port fast, and we're done on the switch. And we don't need to do anything on the router because the router is not relevant to this. There should be no need to involve the router. This is just 
those ports on the switch, traffic's going to come in from this device. It's going to send out first off a broadcast to anything on the network to pick up an IP address, but it's not going to find the router because the router is on VLAN 50 and we need a layer 3 broadcast to find it with an IP helper address and the switch is not going to provide that. It's just going to be providing layer 2. So all that's going to happen is it's going to find the Meraki firewall and the Meraki firewall is going to respond with an IP address. Okay, so let's see if that works. I'm going to connect. Um, I'm going to connect the machine here to that network. Okay, so we might lose our connection to that. Let's just connect that to port 16. Okay, so that machine is now on port 16, and you can see straight away it's already picked up. A new IP address is picked up 1066.6.1 and its gateway is now 1066.6254 and we should be able to ping the gateway which will be the Meraki and we should be able to get out on the internet that we must be able to get out on the internet because I'm connecting to this machine over the internet and we can see that that works okay and we now can no longer ping hopefully the 30 network. Yeah, there's no way for this device to find that network. Traffic's going to go out to the Meraki, and the Meraki needs a route back to the 30 network in order to find it. It doesn't have a route back. And on the other in on the other machine, on here, this one here, if we tried to ping 10.66.6.1, it wouldn't be able to respond because there's no route to that machine. Okay. I mean, you could, you might think maybe it'd be a good idea to add a VLAN interface to the switch to do this, to achieve this, but you don't really want to do that because if you had, if you added the VLAN 66 onto here, you're inviting this switch to then route between those VLANs. Yeah. If, so if you, and you know, maybe you did want to do that because maybe you want to use the same DHCP server and in order to use the same DHCP server to have a DHCP helper. You need a layer three switch. You need a layer three interface on this switch for that VLAN. So you could go into here, you could create VLAN 66, um, and you could give it an IP address. So let's give it 10.66.6.254. Uh, 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 but what you're now doing is you're allowing routing between these interfaces and you might not realize that that's what you've done okay so you've now got a layer 3 interface on this switch and now if you go back to your 66 machine which is this one here this which we added which is 253 and you can now uh, you won't be able to reach the Meraki because the Meraki doesn't have a, a route back but what's the danger in this why is this dangerous well on this machine what you could actually do if it was an attacker, you could now run, say, a scan on the broadcast address, which is to, uh, sorry, on the entire range, let's say, which is going to be slash 24. Let's just do that. So this is now going to scan across the entire range you know, on the network we're on and just make a little discovery about what's going on with it. And what this scan will tell us is that there is a device on 10.66.6.253 and it tells us it's actually a Cisco device. So this machine could now change its gateway to 10.66.6.253 and it could potentially then access other things on the network, which I will just quickly demonstrate, okay? So I'm going to go in here to another network so that I can still reach this machine because I'll lose internet access over this network, over the Ethernet network, because the gateway won't provide um, internet access. I don't care about that because I don't need internet access. I'm just trying to attack the local network, okay? But if I go into the local network and say, change me to 10.66.6, Dot one, same address that I've been given by the DHCP server, but I change my gateway to the address I've discovered on my port scan. 
don't need DNS. Okay, so now if we have a look at the config, ignore this one, that's just so I can make a connection to it. You can see now I've changed to a manual connection of 66.6.1 and a gateway of 253, which is not the gateway the DHCP would have provided me on this. You see, now I should be able to reach the devices. Right, sorry about that. So I had to disconnect from the Wi Fi um, so that it wouldn't confuse the routing um, over to different networks. But you can see here, I can now reach the 30 network on when I'm connected onto um, using that switch as a layer three device. And that was not what we wanted to do. So it's simply by introducing a layer three interface onto the switch, we're actually allowing routing to this new network. So it's quite easy to introduce a private network if you just make sure you're doing it at layer two because by default, that switch won't route from a layer two network to a layer three network or from a layer three network to a layer two network. That's not how it works. Yeah, that will only work if we have a layer three device which can VLAN, do the VLAN routing between those VLANs. And the minute you create a, um, an IP address with a layer three address onto a VLAN of the switch that's doing layer three routing, it will allow VLAN routing. So to avoid that, we simply just don't do it. That's one method of achieving the goal we want to achieve. We could, of course, add access lists to this device so that it's got security between the VLANs, but maybe that's not the best option. Also, on this um, device, we, we, we wanted to add additional security. And the Meraki gives us the filtering that we've set up, the content filtering for this device, um, whereas if we allow layer three routing through the switch and then through the router we we haven't got that option available to us you know other changes we make on the firewall or on our other devices might uh, affect the users on our networks that work maybe we don't want to do that we don't want to impact our current network we don't want to impact our current users we're just trying to create a new network for guests and sometimes it's better to have a whole new network to create a new network where there's no uh, routing and interoperability between the two networks or three networks or four networks or however many. So that's what we've done. I just want to just demonstrate the um, uh, the internet access through that network. So I'm just going to go back onto that device um, and configure it so the DHCP is picking up the, the IP address properly. And let's just go just go back to our switch and just delete that interface because we don't need that. Okay, so here's our device. I'm just going to fire up a browser and make sure that the Meraki's filtering is working. So you can see now we've got um, the details correctly on our guest network. And we filtered uh, gambling, so we shouldn't be able to get to a2tech.com. Okay, nothing. But we can access the BBC. Okay, so the internet works, but we've restricted the internet access, and that seems to be working. So we've got a safe guest on the network, and it's, um, it's safe according to our design. Okay, so hopefully that's been useful. A bit of um, VLAN routing in there, a bit of firewalling in there, and... Um, a little bit of layer two versus layer three and uh, how you can make sure when you design and implement a change like this on your network, you understand the potential pitfalls. I hope that's been useful for you. Thank you very much for watching.